So here's the truth on HR3. This is a complicated one because it's about lowering drug prices. Seems like something we should all agree on, and we do, that's the end goal, but it's complicated on how to get there. So I'm here with an expert, Representative Greg Walden, and uh, you're the ranking member on energy and commerce, and uh, you've been working on this for quite a while. So I wanna ask you a bunch of questions about right. HR3. So this bill, it basically, it instructs the, the Secretary of Health and Human Services right. to, they say negotiate, but it's not really a negotiation. It's, it's, they're, they're basically setting a price based on international price setting? Or yeah, within six formula. countries internationally, they say whatever you sell your drug for there, then it has to be within a certain range of that. And then the Secretary negotiates, which on its face sounds, well, okay, well, that sounds good. Right. Right? What could right. be wrong with that? Um, these, are, these are countries in Europe, and okay, fine. Well, there's a lot of things wrong with that. What's the main problem? We, we, keep, we keep hearing that there's going to be fewer cures because of this. So how does this stifle innovation? Well, we do know from uh, the Congressional Budget Office that if half a billion uh, to a trillion dollars is taken out of the system, which some yeah. say could happen here, there will be 8 to 15 fewer medicines developed. There was another interesting study done in California which showed that of, of, of 25 FDA-approved drugs over the last 10 years, under these rules, only three of them would have actually been uh, approved. That's and, kind of a scary thing. And that, but there's more to the HR3 than just the, the, the I think, the, the misconception that it's a no negotiation, it's really price setting and all the problems that that creates with fewer right. cures. Uh, it, it's also, uh, it's sort of vindictive in a way. So tell me about the tax. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a potential 95% tax if a, if a manufacturer what? refuses to, to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. Let, they want. Let's just start with the term negotiation. Yeah. All right. Everybody loves the IRS. Right. This, this makes the IRS look like a biker because negotiation is, Dan, um, here's what I'm going to pay you for the drug within this range of what you sell it for some, in some other country. Oh, if, if you don't agree to what I tell you I'm going to pay you for it within that range, then I'm going to tax your revenues um, starting in the first quarter, your revenue is 65%. You mean and profits? By the, you mean profits? No, revenues, <laughs> not profits. And, and I was a small revenues. business owner for 20 yeah. years. There is a big difference between yeah. revenues and profit. And so they say 65% wow. in the first quarter. And by the third quarter of that year, I'm at 95% of your revenues. So, you know, what incentive would you have to do anything? Here's a big question. Who does this really hurt? You know, is it hurting big pharma? Because this, this, you know, it's pretty popular to hate on big pharma, but is this really hurting them? Because what they're, what they're doing nowadays is they're, they're seeing innovation in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the biotech industry, small kind of startups. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a good system. That's who it hurts. I want those biotech, those small startup scientists working in some lab in some, some university or, or some small company to go, why don't we try this? Nobody's done that. Right. By exactly. golly, that's where they find a cure. Dr. Brian Drucker at Oregon Health Sciences University developed a drug called Gleevec that deals with stomach cancer. And I've talked to him several times. He said, everybody said, don't go down this path. So I went down that path. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He discovered this cure for a certain right. type of stomach cancer. Look, I, I want to make sure there's competition. Mm -hmm. I'm a private sector person. I believe in it. And, and I think competition works. And if you put the consumer first, and drive the policy to make it what's best for the consumer, then you should get innovation competition. If you have competition, that helps drive prices right. down. The only force that's ever driven prices down. I'm not sure of any price setting that has ever occurred in the history of the world, which has created more supply and lower prices. Right. And Could innovation. Yeah. And Where's innovation. the innovation coming from in the world? Important. High tech, it's here. Drugs, it's here. Because what we want to do is clean up the system yeah. so that new innovators can come around and so that competitors have a fair shake right. at putting a, a, a competing uh, drug out there. Because once you, once you get a market created, then things begin to, to right. work. But, uh, and so the question is, do we, do we change the entire format of the market? Do we take a sledgehammer to the drug market or do we take a scalpel to it? You know, and so you, in energy and commerce, there was a bill to fix the problem with insulin specifically. Right, right. So one out of five seniors, and this is what we're dealing with here, one out of five seniors uh, are diabetic. 
Um, and so when it comes to insulin, we wanted to take the savings that are already in the system or would be negotiated in the system and make sure when you go to the counter at your local pharmacy to get your insulin, mm -hmm. all that savings went to you, right. the senior consumer. We also think there ought to be an out-of-pocket cap yeah. on seniors on Medicare Part D. So you know, so you've got that security, you know the limits, and we lowered the limit. Right. There's a lot of these things you can do, and none of that, by the way, put a spike in innovation like their bill would do. So, so let's get prices down in a right. thoughtful way that doesn't spike innovation, and let's help consumers when they go to the counter and talk to their pharmacists to get the savings for themselves.